Good morning, beautiful people. Uh, it's good to be here with you. From the moment CPS released its guidance for reopening schools to principals, our association was fielding calls and texts about problems with the district's plan. In order to get an accurate sense of what was happening, we conducted a survey. And in that survey, we presented principals with several statements. One of them was, CPS provided me with sufficient guidance and support on how to make reopening work successfully. Less than 28% of principals said agreed with that statement, and 48% disagreed. We gave them room to comment, and one of the representative statements was, there are 200 pages of guidance, quote-unquote guidance, but no additional staff to make it happen. Another statement, we have the staffing needed to reopen our schools safely. Less than 22% of the 377 assistant principals and principals who responded agreed with that statement. More than 54% disagreed with that statement that they had the staffing needed to reopen. One said, CPS opens positions, but there's no talent pool to draw from. It's every school for themselves. Another said, I told the district one of my staff members got COVID and was intensive care, but they refused to count it as a COVID case or do contact tracing because she didn't report it directly to them herself. How is someone fighting for her life supposed to do that? Another statement, given the resources and plans we have, opening schools for in-person instruction in January or February is the right decision. Less than 17% of respondents agreed with that statement. 64% disagreed with the remaining neither agreeing or disagreeing. 64% say opening this schools in January or February is not the right decision. And so we see a problem and we're trying to solve it. We got input from over 350 school leaders and we made this, created a draft. We got 30 principals to, stre to stress test this draft and poke holes in it. And the big question we ask is, how do we give the children of Chicago the best education possible under these circumstances? Not by opposing the district's plan, but by creating a plan that works. And ours has just three simple steps. Step one, open a small group of 50 to 100 in-person pilot schools and make COVID-19 vaccination, vaccinations a priority for the staff in that group. Number two, Focus the district's human and material resources on ensuring the success of the pilot schools. Three, if successful, expand the pilot every three or four weeks as groups of schools demonstrate preparedness and readiness for in-person learning. Now, it may seem simple, but there's a long list of problems with the current plan that are solved by this new approach. And here's just a few examples. Problem number one, staffing. Staffing is unstable and unpredictable in many schools according to the principals who lead them. This plan solves that problem because a phase-in pilot allows CPS to assess staffing readiness at a small, manageable group of schools and find additional staff for those schools until the staffing situation stabilizes. Problem number two, there are not enough doses of the vaccine to vaccinate all school staff, which is an issue between you all and CTU. This plan solves that problem because the pilot would allow the city to prioritize vaccination on a smaller group of staff who are part of the pilot. And that'll definitely make more teachers want to be a part of the pilot, which will in turn improve and stabilize staffing at those schools. Problem three, over 400 schools are doing this for the first time with little expertise to lean on within the district. The initial in-person pilot would solve this problem by creating a group of peer experts and in-person learning ambassadors who can be a resource for administrators and staff in their networks and subsequent expansions of the pilot. And there's a long list of problems just like these that this plan either solves or creates a more realistic path for a solution. But in order to get the district to adopt this plan, you have to come to grips with the fact that your current approach is unworkable. Many of our members presume that the district sincerely believes its plan will work. And in some schools, it might. But you're not attempting to open some K-8 schools. You're attempting to open all K-8 schools. And no matter how sincere your faith in your plans is, we need you to understand that that faith does not square with the reality of implementation on the ground in most schools. I don't know any better example of that than yesterday's press conference where the CEO said that pods would be quarantined, and I quote her, quarantined immediately if there was a case, when at the very same time, a pre-K pod was in its first day of quarantine after attending school on Monday, even though the district was notified of a positive case in that classroom on Sunday afternoon before. 
Right? You have to understand that what you're telling people, whether you know it or not, is not true. You haven't built up the staffing or the people underneath you who can execute and deliver on the promises that you're making. So our approach was designed to create a situation that addressed the concerns of principals, created a reopening structure that made it easier for the district and teachers to come to terms with their specific issues. And the last thing, and I think it accomplishes that. And the last thing I want to say is remind folks that this plan is coming from a group of people who have never left schools. We were in the schools before March. We were in the schools after March, uh, making sure that meals were being uh, distributed, making sure that technology was being distributed to students and families. We got principals who even go to families' home themselves to help with, to help troubles, help parents to troubleshoot to keep their kids uh, in online learning. We were there before the pandemic, and, and no matter what decision you guys make about this plan, we'll still be in schools. And so we don't have any other reason to question this plan other than the legitimate concerns we have about its safety and its feasibility, and the majority of the principals and assistant principals who are charged with implementing this plan do not believe it will work. And so we've created an alternative that gives you a much better chance of success, and we hope that you seriously consider implementing it. Thank you, Troy. Thank you for your comments. Mr. President, we will now proceed with the speakers from um, the public participants. President Delvay, can I ask a quick question? <clears throat> yes. Um, and, you can, and you can tell me if this is appropriate for later, but I was just curious, you know, uh, we don't get to hear much about the work with principals and I know the district is doing work with principals and I was, and we hear more about sort of the teacher side of this. And I was wondering if the district had any response um, about your, you know, the work with principals that's happening, conversations with principals that are happening. And if it makes sense to hold it till later, I just feel like, you know, there might be an opportunity here to get some clarity. Dr. Jackson. Thank you, uh, President Del Valle, and thank you, board member Ty Breeland for that question. Um, as you stated, we do um, communicate with our principals on a very regular basis. Um, at the district level, we host webinars. We've hosted several of them throughout this process. We also rely heavily on our network chiefs, as well as groups such as the principal um, fellows and principal advisory councils, et cetera, to offer feedback on the plan. And not to mention the open door policy that both Chief McDay uh, and I have and, I and Chief uh, Rivera as well. Um, we always appreciate feedback. Um, the plan that was referenced by the last caller we just received yesterday. So, um, you know, we appreciate that feedback. What I will say is the notion of bringing people back in smaller groups is something that makes a lot of sense, which is why we've done a phased in approach. Um, there has not been any attention given to the fact that kids have been in school for uh, almost three weeks um, since the beginning of January and the plan is working. Um, we've been able to have kids back, principals, teachers, students, and parents have reported a positive experience with the return to in-person instruction. And we are, we, you know, we did plan for scenarios um, such as a COVID case happening in the school. And I'm happy to report that our principals and teachers have been extremely diligent in doing what the plan calls for in order to mitigate the spread of COVID. Um, so I wanna highlight that. I also wanna say around the issue of reopening, I continue to point back to the fact that we are looking at the science. We're not cherry picking um, data around this. There's robust data that started with the early reports from um, Brown, um, started with a, a report from the Academy on Pediatrics, recently the, the report that CDC released and the report that the Chicago Department of Health released on schools here in Chicago. So we're not talking about rural Wisconsin and other places. And we're looking at that data and our decisions are being driven by public health uh, data. We think that the vaccine is a very important tool. It will add to the tools that help us mitigate the spread of COVID. Things like wearing a mask, proper hygiene, social distancing, et cetera. But all of those studies have proven and concluded you can reopen with proper mitigation strategies and the vaccine is gonna further enhance that. 
the district has advocated for teachers, um, administrators, et cetera, to be at the front of that line in the city's grand scheme. I talked a little bit about some of those limitations, but we're gonna continue to um, push for vaccines. But the thing that I think people aren't addressing is we can't make everybody get vaccinated. There probably will never be a period where everyone is vaccinated because people have choice and they don't have to get the vaccine. And so I just wanna really, impress upon people that it is one tool in the toolbox that has many tools that help us with um, protecting people from the spread of COVID. The last thing I'll say is we've been using the dashboard that we publicly released today with principals throughout the reopening plan since um, last winter. And that has been a way to have three-way conversation or even more conversation between the schools, the respective departments that have prep have to do preparation for reopening as well as the district leaders. And so that's how we are able to track whether or not people have received their PPE, whether or not their transportation issues. There are all sorts of things that we track to ensure that principals have what they need to safely and successfully reopen schools. We have now made that available to the public so that our LSCs as well as parents at large can take a look at that. And we will continue to take into consideration all of the great advice that we're getting from so many stakeholders to strengthen our plan. Dr. Jackson, what, why would a principal not uh, report immediately concerns regarding staffing or equipment supplies? Um, there is a mechanism in yeah. place for those, not only for those reports to be mm -hmm. made, I, but for yeah. those concerns to be addressed immediately, aren't there? Yes, absolutely. Um, the, I don't, there is no reason for a principal not to report it. And I don't know that principals wouldn't report it. All our principals are responsible administrators. I think when things happen in their school, whether they, you know, go through a formal process or just call a network chief or ping or text, you know, one of the people that I just mentioned earlier. So um, I just want principals to know if there are concerns, they can definitely li lift those up. And they do on a pretty regular basis. So um, I, I can't comment on that. I haven't been given any name or particulars to address that, but I will say on the whole, we have excellent communication processes with our principals, excellent relationships with them. And I would encourage anyone who has questions or concerns to avail yourselves to the processes that are in place, but to also take advantage of your network chief or the open door policy that Chief McDay, Chief Rivera and I have. So as you said in your, in your uh, report earlier, every school will be ready. Every school will be ready. Uh, and uh, if, if there is a deficiency somewhere that, that gets missed for whatever reason, that deficiency uh, as identified by the principal who is the leader of the school yes. would be addressed immediately. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, Okay, let's proceed with the- uh, Thank you.